of uh, the North Korean dictator go up. Plus, as we get ready to hear the president's Middle East plan, mm -hmm. Mike Pompeo has been a very strong advocate for Israel all in, during his time in the U.S. House and, that, and during his time at the CIA and working with Israel. And now we're going to see a very strong team that's going to be able to carry out the president's desires. So I wrote down your, your two profound effects. We'll go into it as such because that actually is in the direct order of things that are coming up, right? By the way, Mike Pompeo may or may not see a confirmation situation, not really necessary because he can serve without it confirmed for 210 by days. Mitch McConnell confirmed he absolutely will go through hearing and there absolutely will be a confirmation process. There was some question of whether yeah. or not that would happen, but Mitch McConnell's office saying it will indeed happen. So, But he could do it for 210 days if it didn't happen. Right. Um, what, what do you think about this process, though, uh, of going forward from the Democrats' perspective? Why are they so critical so quickly? Oh, well, because it's easy and the Secretary of State got fired by a tweet. So I think that's, you know, ample fodder to continue making the argument that this is a president that does things in a completely inconstructive way. There are concerns Why is about that my constructive. Well, it's embarrassing, and I think that if you have such respect for Rex Tillerson, that you have a sit-down conversation with him beforehand, give him the opportunity to have a press conference with you to talk about his time and his service to the country. Why did that matter? What? Why is because that it's treating people with dignity and respect. This president uses Twitter, we know, for foreign policy. Some people like it, some people don't. But I think Mike Pompeo, ha we have concerns about him, the new acting uh, head of the CIA as well. The torture issue was mentioned. We know that both of them are not in favor okay, of the Iran so the White deal. House is saying that the timing was everything for the president at this point, right? And getting the right person in place, the team in place with these North Korea talks coming up. Uh, I just have a question, though. Is is the president showing that he's actually moving more into what Rex Tillerson's original camp was, and that was talking to North Korea and sitting down, down mm. with Kim Jong Un? Well, the Wall Street Journal editorial staff just pointing that out last hour, saying, "Look, you know, they were in disagreement for a long time. The president was not talking about sitting down with Kim Jong Un. That was what Rex Tillerson wanted. So, isn't he actually moving more towards what Tillerson was wanting to do, Lisa?" But, Jessica mentions that firing him is not constructive, but you know what isn't constructive? Having someone represent you on a world on the world stage that doesn't truly reflect your voice. And that's the biggest problem for President Trump. As he said, Mike Pompeo and him are on the same wavelength. I think also the impetus for change is the upcoming talks with North Korea as well. Having someone that you trust by your side in those discussions. Uh, Mike Pompeo is a perfectly capable man. As David laid out, he has a very, yeah. very impressive uh, resume. And we saw massive in public disagreements between President Trump right. and Rex Tillerson on issues like the Paris Climate Treaty. Also, not to mention the fact it was reported that Rex Tillerson called the president a moron. A moron. So why do you uh, want? You it. Why do you want someone like that <laughs> representing you? On, and well, what, and what impact have does it have to have, to have someone like that representing you? Also what happened with Russia? Right. And that's with the, the poisoning now. And, and the president said today as he was getting ready to board the aircraft to, to head to California to see the wall prototypes, he said, look, you know, I can make this decision on my own. I did have a group of people I talked with about North Korea. I would have to assume Rex Tillerson was not one of them. Um, but what he said, though, about the Russian poisoning is I'm supposed to talk with Theresa May later today. Right. It, it's likely that Russia did this. But that's not what Rex Tillerson did. He issued a statement, David. He did. And... Clearly, that was not what the White House wanted. And this ultimately goes down to the president gets the staff he or she wants. Bottom line. And it, it is interesting to hear Jessica and pundits come out and say, oh, is Pompeo really qualified? This guy was the top guy out of West Point who went to an Ivy League school, I'm which, which I, believe, I believe President Obama had secretary of states who served in Congress, like Mike Pompeo, and who went to an Ivy League school. Somehow, if you're a Democrat and you have those credentials, you are immediately, you don't even need confirmation. That's Let's just put you in, in. If you're a Republican, whoa, you're not qualified. That's just absolutely 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 issue I will be the Pompeo. Ivy League, no matter what side of the aisle that you're on. That, it has nothing to do with this at all. The concerns were about his policies, his attitudes towards torture. And Harris, thank you for bringing up the Russia point here. What Rex Tillerson did yesterday in going out and making that statement, joining the UK and that Boris Johnson is even talking about England not going to the World Cup over this. That is something that the president hasn't been willing to do. He has been much tougher on Russia Putin, than the administration. President Putin had a deadline which he met in order oh. to come back on that. And so waiting for that deadline, I'm not putting words in the mouth of anybody. 
was what the world was also doing. I mean, we weren't on the outside of the fence doing David, that. David, his no. critics are going to use this as an opportunity to question whether there's chaos inside the West Wing with a string of recent high-profile departures from the White House, including Hope Hicks and most recently Gary Cohn, and now Secretary of State being fired. How will the president sort of calm that, um, that speculation that is out there on the heels of this announcement? If tax cuts and a roaring economy and a defense uh, department finally getting the funds they need to build a better military is chaos, most Americans are going to say, keep the chaos going. If this is what it takes to shake up Washington, D.C., and get us the results we asked for in the 2016 election, they're going to say, keep doing it. it also the president seems... says that there was more coming, too. He said this is one of the things, among others, that he wants to see done. Go well, ahead. I think, one, we all need to accept the fact that this is never going to be a White House that has the same stability in terms of uh, turnover that previous presidents have had. We've, President Trump has already demonstrated his willingness to let people go. This is something that he is not bothered by, so we'll continue to see it. Secondly, nobody should be surprised by the fact that Rex Tillerson is exiting. This is something that has been long discussed in the media. As I mentioned before, uh, major public disagreements between the two. So, I mean, this is not surprising in the least bit. And it, it, Chris Sarwell was suggesting in the 10 o'clock hour um, that some of this might have been division over tariffs as well, just like Gary Cohn's exit. Rex Tillerson, a businessman traveling the world, he was suggesting might find it a hard message. Um, you know, what the yeah, well, president is doing right now in those steel and aluminum. Th he's looking no... at Larry Kudlow. That's what the president said as he was about to board the plane. He said, you know, I, I, Larry and I also have our disagreements. I'm now quoting him. He said, but, you know, on tariffs, that's some place where we do agree. And so, I, I mean, yeah, you've got these people going out. But the, the fairness and do you have good people coming in potentially that Democrats have knocked him for, we don't know yet. But, yeah, I mean, look at the lineup for that one position. Agreed. Uh, look, the president, <laughs> it gets back to, the president deserves who he wants. And there isn't a single administration where an entire staff has stayed the entire term of the presidency. Oh, and you want absolutely. a president well, to he, get but his to be fair, or her He's shown team. a lot of frustration with not being able to fill positions that he needs well, to well, fill. Not right. fill. What positions not filled that he, there, every well, cabinet Well, how many ambassadors are we missing? How many security clearances did they just lose 30 over people who hadn't been well, fully Rex Tillerson's through the process? taking a bit of it on the chin about the South Korean ambassador. I mean, there are some areas, when you look at how much he shrank the State Department while he was there, and, and some said very ill-advised ways that he did it, and the numbers, I mean, he's wearing some of that, too. We got a scoop, but we'll come back to this topic obviously later in in the show we have much more reaction on rex tillerson's firing a little bit later first though president trump is on his way to california where he will inspect prototypes of his border wall the rough greeting he might get from protesters and republicans on the house intelligence committee wrapping up their russia investigation but that hardly ends the finger pointing whether this should bring the whole issue to a close as the president trumpets the report's findings he was tweeting, and we're coming right back. We're very happy with the decision by the House Intelligence Committee saying there was absolutely no collusion. Our FBI and our, and our intelligence agencies working on real problems and get them away from uh, what they're doing now, which is it looks like spinning in circles. We spent 14 months on this investigation looking for collusion. We didn't find any. On the other side, the ranking Democrat on the Intelligence Committee, Adam Schiff, saying this is all about protecting the president. A grave disservice to the country. Uh, essentially, it's the Intelligence Committee majority saying we just rather not know uh, mm -hmm. if it's going to be bad news. Uh, and that is, uh, I think, a, a betrayal of the promise that was made that we would follow the facts wherever they lead. President Trump touting the report tweeting. The House Intelligence Committee has, after a 14-month-long in-depth investigation, found no evidence of collusion or coordination between the Trump campaign and Russia to influence the 2016 presidential election. Doug McElway, live in Washington for us with the latest. Hey, Doug. Hi, Sandra. And now we can all expect a minority report. What form it's going to take, whether a full-blown report or some sort of a formal statement, we don't yet know. We do know it will follow the same dynamic that has marked the House Intelligence Committee Committee investigations all along, a profound division where neither party can find the slightest hint of an agreement. Here's the GOP conclusion. Yes, the Russians tried to interfere with our, uh, with our, invest with our election process. Yes, they uh, had cyber attacks, active measures going on. We could find no evidence of collusion between either campaign uh, and the Russians. 
And in a statement last night, ranking member Adam Schiff said the report was an attempt to protect the president, not the country, and that it, quote, represents yet another capitulation to the executive branch. He added the majority, quote, proved unwilling to subpoena documents like phone records, text messages, bank records, and other key records so that we might determine the truth about the most significant attack on our democratic institutions in history. Instead, it began a series of counter-investigations designed to attack the credibility of the FBI, the Departments of Justice, and State. But nowhere does Schiff directly dispute the Republican finding of no Russian collusion. Connecticut Democrat Senator Richard Blumenthal said it will be up to the Senate Intelligence Committee to find the truth. These conclusions by the Intelligence Committee are completely lacking in credibility, factual support, and trust. Now the committees of the United States Senate have to do the job that the House Intelligence Committee has betrayed. The Democrats were caught by surprise by yesterday's release of the draft report. They still haven't seen it. The report won't be released publicly until it is scrubbed of classified information, a process that could take months. The partisan wrangling over the committee's work has gotten so extreme at times that the committee literally built a wall to separate Democratic staffers from Republican staffers, according to the Wall Street Journal. In this case, Sandra, the wall did not make for very good neighbors. Back to you. <laughs> Doug McElway, thank you. My pleasure. So, on that note, uh, <laughs> David, is case closed with this? Case is closed when the Mueller investigation closes, and it is the one that matters most because mm -hmm. it's the one that can put someone in jail. It can find, find uh, findings. It can find wrongdoing, which to date there has been no evidence shown that they have found that. Though I would offer to you there is a more disturbing trend that's coming out of these Intelligence Committee hearings, which is as soon as a member of Congress hears someone make a testimony, they have to yeah. run to a camera and tell them everything they just heard. Or and what implications? Off camera. That's right. And what implications that has long-term on national security issues and on investigations, time will tell, but it's a bit disturbing. So should the president even be taking a victory lap at this point, Lisa? I, I mean, I, I had a laugh at Adam Schiff and his statement there because we know that the Democrats have gone and leaked so much information between uh, so these closed door hearings, particularly with one most recent with Hope Hicks, uh, many people have accused Adam Schiff of being that individual. He himself, he has not been able to state definitively any evidence of collusion he has. He's hedged on that question. And I think at some point we're going to have to accept the fact that, according to the book Shattered, 24 hours after Hillary Clinton lost, they came together and said that they wanted to blame the election loss on Russia. They're the ones that paid for the dossier. They've been helping fuel this narrative in the media that the media has happily bought and driven on behalf of the Democrat Party. And at some point, well, I, without I, evidence of collusion, we're going to have to admit that there's no evidence of collusion. Well, we're going to have to admit there's no evidence of collusion, like David said, when Bob Mueller and his team go home. That's the final thing here. We have the Senate Intelligence Committee, which is still investigating this. But I find it incredibly hard to believe that Hillary Clinton and her team paid off all the national security professionals who work across 17 intelligence agencies to say that the Russians wanted President Trump to win, which he's denying, which is inaccurate. And the GOP is now okay. saying Hold on. that is isn't but the Jessica, case, but everybody else. But Jessica, come on. I mean, you've worked in politics as well. You're saying that $2,000 spent in the state of Wisconsin helped sway the election or had any oh. impact on the election at, at all? What, what, well, we also and know we that also voting know machines were tampered with. We know that there's it's not been just ads purchased on both sides of the aisle. There are oh, totally. events after the and it started election on both Sanders, sides of the aisle. And then Bernie Sanders was done as a thing, and but then it's just it was such Donald a weak Trump. argument, Jessica. It's, no, there are many, many reasons that Hillary Clinton lost. And I can talk about it. Not stepping foot in the state of Wisconsin. When, when Republicans on House Intel, uh, at least one or two of them have said they made a mistake. I mean, they made a mistake in thinking that there was any sort of connection between uh, the meddling that went on per Russia, because nobody has said that that didn't exist, was actually to benefit any one candidate over the other. And so after the Democrats recently asked for 100 more people that they wanted to see, and, you know, there was a close look. I've been talking with, with Intel members on overtime for weeks now. There was a close look at, well, what are we getting out of these sessions? We're not really finding out anything. So what did you say during the commercial? break you said collusion like five times like no collusion no collusion and that's what they're tasked you know this is not Mueller's investigation they can't do gymnastics and go eight different directions but they also they can't have to decide focused. without and it's if they a bipartisan found a committee. reason to do that then why not concentrate on the actual meddling and I want to ask you about this that's the thing to concentrate on we have more elections coming up this year the uh, Democrats and Schiff are not the only one obsessed 
about Russia and the 2016 election, as we just saw, Hillary Clinton is still obsessed as she continues to say that people are backwards who didn't vote for her. The Democrats are still obsessed about why they lost the 2016 election. Donald Trump and hasn't even come to grips with the fact that he won. He worried about Hillary or Day. Apparently, we can't make our own decisions about who to vote for. We have to listen to her husbands or boyfriends or whatever, according to Hillary Clinton. Yeah. Which is laughable. Wow. We're going to jump in with this Fox News alert. Breaking right now, Fox News has now been able to confirm that the uh, White House has fired the aide to Secretary of State Rex Tillerson, who contradicted the account of the secretary's um, dismissal. And this, of course, as we learned from our own John Roberts reporting today from the White House, that Rex Tillerson was told of his firing on Friday by John Kelly. <laughs> Look, but there, there, are, there are more registered Democrats in the, yeah. in the district than Republicans. We don't really know about the polling because going back to 2004, special election polling has been wrong by, I think, about five points. So it's within the margin it's of close. error. We don't really no know where it's going to go. Connor Lamb is a strong candidate. Rick Saccone isn't. Look at some of the debates. Can, He's can had some messy moments. With regard to that, because I'm sure you saw the video, kind of the late stages of the campaign, with Rick Saccone calling, vilifying the other side as not believing in God or yeah. loving God. I mean, it was kind of an odd moment, and I'm wondering where he kind of has gone with this. Well, so this is where it gets dicey for um, Republicans, I would say, is look, so there's four 